The war began with Fort Sumner, but it was not officially recognized until the first battle of Bull Run on July 21, 1861 in Northern Virginia. The Union attempted many tactics and yet none of them seemed to work effectively and gave them away. The Confederate soldiers had held a defensive line against attempted flanking maneuvers, earning Colonel Thomas Jackson the nickname Stonewall. Confederate reinforcements arrived and forced the confused New Yorkers to flee. A collection of Union soldiers and Washington observers made their retreat and eventually reached Washington. This disaster caused the Union to treat this as an actual war. On August 28th through 30th, 1862, the newly reorganized Union Army set out to assist the war effort. General Robert E. Lee attempted to crush a unit of Union soldiers before reinforcements could arrive, but was quickly foiled by a Union Army taking a new defensive position. General Lee sent Stonewall Jackson to flank the Union Army and capture their supply lines. This succeeded in luring the Union Army out of their defensive position. Later on, in a decisive counterattack, the Confederate soldiers moved to cut off Union retreat, forcing them back north. On September 16th of the same year, Lee and his army of 52,000 went back to Sharpsburg, Maryland to set up camp. A day later, Union General George B. McLennan and his army of 75,000 moved into the town and later found Lee's camps outside of Sharpsburg near the Antietam Creek. This battle was fought head-on, no flanking included. At noon, Lee and his army had lost over 10,000 men. The Union Army lost more men, around 13,000 soldiers, but Lee still retreated the battle and fled south to Virginia. Newly appointed commander Joseph Hooker and his army of 97,000 marched to Chancellorville, Chancellorsville, Virginia on April 29, 1863. He met up with Lee's army of 57,000 the next day and commenced the fighting. This battle was fought for an entire week. On the sixth day of fighting, Hooker came up with a bait-and-switch plan to use against Lee. This bait-and-switch plan used one half of his army to flank around the Rappahannock River and attack the Confederate army once dusk arrived. This plan ultimately failed, and as the seventh day was coming to its end, so was the Union army. Losing 14,000 men overall, Hooker, who was completely sure that he was going to lose this battle, decided to call his men back and would retreat before May 7. This battle would be called the bloodiest battle of the Civil War until two months later. On June 30, 1863, victorious Lee and his army marched away from their camps in Hanover, Pennsylvania to the town of Gaysburg. Their morale skyrocketed from the recent battles, but unfortunately for the Confederate Army, there was another problem at hand. Union General George G. Meade and his army of a little over 82,000 were all, also mar marching to Gaysburg. Both armies saw each other and the first shots were fired on July 1st. The battle raged on for the next two days while the citizens of Gaysburg hid in terror from the constant gunfire. Things were looking pretty grim for Lee, losing 28,000 within two days, 5,000 more than the Union Army. He surrendered on July 3rd. This battle took the name from the Battle of Chancellorsville for the bloodiest battle of the Civil War. The Battle of Appomattox Courthouse, which occurred on April 9, 1865, was a part of a larger campaign led by Ulysses S. Grant for the Union and Robert E. Lee for the Confederacy. Initially, Union soldiers were outnumbered but slowly gained men from the South and West and encircled the Confederate troops, vastly outnumbering them. Rather than destroy the lives of his men, General Lee surrendered the Army of Northern Virginia. Although not the end of the war, it set the stage for its conclusion. Union soldiers were ordered to refrain from celebration and taunting, as the Confederate soldiers were considered fellow countrymen. Confederate soldiers were paroled and allowed to return home. This set the conditions for all remaining surrenders of Confederate forces. It is important to note that a formal treaty was never signed and the process of reunification had begun.